What's up guys and girls, Shell Techno here. Coming at you with the 1 12th scale 8x12 shed framing project. So we dreamt this up because typically we would actually build something in lieu of building a scale version of it. But uh, in the current COVID situation we're in, and maybe in the future, there is benefit to doing it uh, on a small scale so that we can understand the components and how they fasten together. Uh, there certainly would be, it's just, it takes time to do this. So uh, what do I got here? Well, I've laid out some of the tools that I would need. Uh, I've got a speed square here. We'll talk about that in a little bit. I got a pencil. I've got my raw materials, which were shipped to me. A uh, straight edge ruler, a bit of honeys, in case I, I get low on E or sugar. All those are rewards for doing things right as well. I got some tape, I'll talk about that in a second. I have a means with which to cut wood, and I'm gonna try this. This is a uh, metal cutting bandsaw, or sorry, metal cutting sawzall blade uh, that I think will work well. Picture my wife, just in case things get ugly. Something beautiful to look at. I've also got some quarter inch grid paper here, uh, which we may or may not need for this. Dow calipers, rubber band, whatever, here we go. Okay, first of all, using the paper as a dance floor or a surface to work off of. Uh, I, I reference dance floor as in, normally we would frame a flat surface to begin with, uh, which would have floor joists in it and sheeting and we would build off of that. We're only requiring a wall and a rafter section here, and then we're gonna let, turn you loose if you wanna build more wall sections and go up from there. But if we treat this as a dance floor, and if we also assume like all standardized uh, material and nominally produced material, meaning common sizes, these edges are going to be square and perpendicular uh, to each other, just like the table edge is square. So we can use that to our advantage. What I would recommend that you do is create an offset, and you can do that in any way. You could measure an inch. I'm actually going to create an offset by using the ruler as the offset, lining up the bottom edge flush here, striking a line. Then I'm going to do the same thing this way. Strike a line. Oh, and I messed it up. Ressa fressa. Let's try it one more time. There. All right, that'll work. Uh, I'm also going to offset for my table to show you a little trick as well. And I'll just measure that. We'll go three inches here. Okay. And I think I'm just gonna do the bottom edge for now. Actually, let's go. Let's go one inch, then we can use more of our speed square for this. So there's one inch right there. I'm gonna mark the table temporarily, nothing too major. I'll tape this edge. And if you would have taken a paper or an onboard drafting class, you probably would have done something like this. Slide this down, take the slack out, shift this up to one inch of offset. Right there. Good. I'll mark it. Take out all this. I did unroll this and I rolled it back against itself as well because they probably have a pretty good memory from uh, sitting in the bag. So what I've got now, <clears throat> I've actually got to cut, kind of have this cool feature where I've got a slide rule on an old school drafting table. I could make lines by sliding my speed square. And you saw that as one of the features. Some of your speed squares actually have notches or, or bevels in them at certain uh, like quarter inch marks or whatever. Um, this one does not, but if I want to draw a line that's an inch and a half up from here, I could do this, get a straight line. Kind of cool, okay? Um, I didn't put it close enough on this edge in order to do that. But uh, Let's start talking about layout of our wall section. So we are building an 8 foot by 12 foot wall section. We're going to draw it 1 12th scale, which means it's going to be 8 inches by 12 inches on our paper. Now we'll make the the, the 12 foot long section actually 12 feet and the sections that go in between if you were going to do that you would make those shorter okay everyone a little different angle here overhead <clears throat> uh <laughs> similar to the video 
I want you to build and lay out a dance floor or a platform to start from, uh, even if you're not going to build a base or a, a floor for the shed, we're gonna draw that out. So the simple way to do that, we have a, a 12 inch line on the bottom, which is representing our 12 foot length. And we don't have our eight foot sides here or our 12 foot opposite side. So what I'm gonna encourage you to do is draw some lines using the speed square. You can go off the edge of your paper as well. So that can work as a scribe edge like this. Uh, it's a little tougher to draw with. If you're off the table, it makes life a little easier if you squared with the table. But I'm gonna start that line up like this on both sides. And then I'm gonna use my ruler and measure out eight inches. Uh, I know that my overall for my dance floor needs to be eight inches. Uh, lining off of that line or what's called tailing off of that line. There's an eight right there. And now I can connect these together with my straight edge. Unfortunately, my ruler or my uh, speed square is not big enough to reach all the way up there. Right there. and connect these together. Uh, EC from Essential Craftsman pointed out something in Framing Pro Tips that we may or may not get to see. But what he was saying was it's the fastest for you to use the surface that you're building on as a scribing tool or a measuring tool. So I could grab one of my boards out of my bundle, which is what you're gonna do now. We need to grab some of our long material in order to make our bottom cords. So I could grab one of these and I could measure out 12 inches on here, but it's really not as efficient, even though that's fast, as laying it on here and marking where I need to cut it. So I'm gonna put a mark like this, and then I'm gonna use my speed square for habit, and I'm gonna strike a perpendicular line on that. Now I need to cut that why does that not look very perpendicular? Very old speed square. I need to cut that and methods for this, uh, I've been experimenting a little bit. What I found works well is if I clip onto the bottom of the material like this, line this up so that my edge, uh, my, my cut line is right with the edge of the speed square. And then if I can also clip it into the bottom edge of the table if it reaches that far. In this case, this material's thicker than that, so it won't clip in. I'm gonna overhang it on the edge of the table. And then what to use for cutting? Well, I've got a uh, handheld uh, hacksaw blade. Now, hacksaw blade teeth only go in one direction. So this, this blade will only cut forward. You have to, it only cuts on the downstroke, okay? Um, I could try a sawzall blade. I've already tried this and it does not work that well because the teeth are too aggressive. This is a 14 teeth per inch, that's what that says. And it's, you need a finer tooth than that. This is 18 TPI or 18, sorry, 18 tooth per inch, there we go. And this one cuts pretty well. And then if you put it in a hacksaw, if you have one of these, well, it works even better. But for the sake of demonstration, uh, I took a little bit of practice on this. You might wanna practice on a smaller or a spare piece if you've got one uh, in order to be able to cut effectively. So I've got to go cutting direction this way and I'm gonna pin this here and here. It takes quite a bit of force to hold this in place and down and then make sure you're not cutting on your table surface either. I'm using the speed square as a guide for my blade and I'm just starting out really easy, pinching this as tight as I can. And with a fresh blade, it doesn't do too bad at cutting through this. You can hear I'm getting close to the end. And there's my 12 footer. And there's my 12 foot board. And my end is pretty square. I got a little bit to trim off there yet. Okay, so I've got one here. And in the video, we're gonna lay out a set of these. And you'll notice that we cut these about 24 and a half inches. So my top one is good at 12 inches. My bottom one, I could use as a, as a marker, a scribe. 
I'll flush up these ends here, strike a line here, double check. And now I'm going to X that as a habit and take the line. Same process, taking the line, meaning I want the kerf of the blade to actually go through the line because I don't want it to be too long. Something like that right there. If the blades are too sharp, I'll actually backstroke this because it will cut just not the way it's supposed to be. And I'm just floating the blade over this. If I try it with this one, you can see it's, it'll work, but it, it definitely grabs and bites more while not really cutting as well. Hacksaw, just float the blade. Because there's more mass in the handle and body of the hacksaw, it ends up working out quite a bit better. <laughs> and make it look that easy, but there we go. Okay, now I've got my top and bottom plate. They're my sole plates, or sole plates. And I've got these laid out to length. This is what we wanna get to right here. We're gonna tip these up on edge like the video did, and then we're gonna talk about layout next. 